All right, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at the last topic of physics topic questions, fluid mechanics. So it says an object of 50 grams floats in a liquid of density 2.5 kilograms uh, per millimeter, sorry, uh, grams per millimeter. Uh, when the object is placed in a liquid of density 2.0 uh, grams per millimeter, it sinks at the bottom of the container. What is the force that the object exerts on the bottom of the container? Okay, so here's the deal. I'm just gonna go ahead. Uh, first, I want to find the volume of the water displaced by the mass, right? I know that according to the formula of density, density is just mass over volume, all right? Now, let's say I want to find the volume, right? Volume is just going to be the mass divided by the density because I have to rearrange that, right? So now, the mass of the object is 50 grams, and if I divide that by the density, it's going to be 2.5, right, grams per millimeter, milliliter. Uh, grams cancel out, and I'm going to get 50 divided by 2.5 is roughly 20 milliliters. Now that I have the volume of the uh, water that's displaced, of this liquid, of the set liquid, I can find the mass, right? I can find the mass of the liquid as well. So I'm just going to have to multiply for mass the volume by density. So I just multiply 20 milliliters by the volume, uh, I'm sorry, the density of the liquid, which happens to be about uh, 2 grams per milliliter. So the milliliters now cancel out if I put the units and the mass of the water is going to be 40 grams. Now that I have the mass of the water, I can find the amount of the weight that is given uh, by the water. All right. According to the uptrust formula, it's going to be equal to its weight. So I can find the waters uh, sort of push towards the object. And then I can find the weight of that same object to see whether they balance out. And if not, why does it sink? So the weight of the water, the, the push that the water is exerting on that sort of uh, object is going to be 40 grams. All right. It's, keep in mind, it's grams. And if I want to find the weight, weight is going to be mass times gravity. Quick lesson on weight. Um, anytime you have an object in a liquid, it's going to have this downward push. It's going to be caused by the weight. And you can find the weight by using this formula. And keep in mind that the weight is going to be equal to the uptrust. So now, uh, the 40 grams is going to get divided by 1,000. And that gets multiplied by the amount of gravity, which happens to be 10. Even the question says it. So now, what's going to happen is we're going to get 0.4 newtons of weight. Now, what's the weight of the object, right? If you want to find the weight of the object, the mass of it is 50 grams. So again, 50 gets divided by 1,000. And that gets multiplied by 10, and you get 0.5 newtons. So that's why the object experiences sinking, because its weight is more than the push that the water is exerting on it. So imagine this is the object, right? The water is, is pushing it up, but it's also experiencing some downward force due to the weight of that object, which eventually overcomes that water's push, and it sinks to the bottom of the container. It just goes down there. And now, we, if you want to find out the amount of the force that the object exerts on the bottom of the container, you have to subtract these two forces by each other. So so 0.5 newtons gets subtracted by 0.4 newtons, and the answer is simply 0.1 newtons, which makes choice A the correct answer. Uh, question 20, it says a man of mass 75 kilograms, so the mass of the man is 75 kilograms, lies on a bed of 10,000 nails. I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing it. Maybe he's some sort of magician. <laughs> Anyways, the tip of each nail has an area of one millimeter square. So one square millimeter. So the area is one millimeter square. Okay, first off, right off the bat, I can see the answers are in pascals, right? Pascal is an SI unit. That means you have to convert millimeters to meters square. So how do you do that? Well, one millimeter to meter, right? According to scientific notation, you have to multiply by 10 to the power of negative three. Had this been centimeters, you have to do this. Centimeters to meters, you have to multiply by 10 to the power of negative 2. And sometimes you get micrometers, and for micrometers to meters, you have to multiply by 10 to the power of negative 6. Let's see how that works. So if I want to convert 1 millimeter square to 1 meter square, I have to multiply 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3 to the power of 2. All right? So now I'm going to get 1 times 10 to the power of negative 6. That's going to be 1 meter square uh, from one millimeter square to one meter square. Why to the power of two? Because it's square, it's millimeter square, all right? If it was millimeters cube for volume, you have to multiply it by 10 to the power of negative, uh, sorry, positive three. So 10 to the power of negative three to the power of three, whenever you want to convert millimeter cube to meter cube. So that's going to be the answer for the area now. Now that we know the area, we can find the pressure. According to the formula of pressure, we know pressure is going to be the force divided by the area. Now, how can I find the force of the man? Well, the man is actually going to exert some weight on the bed, right? And to find the weight of the man, again, just like the last question, you have to multiply mass by gravity. 
So the mass of the man is 75 kilograms. You multiply that by its gravity, which is 10. And that gets divided by the area, which is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 6. Keep in mind, we have 10,000 nails. So that's just going to get multiplied by 10 to the power of... Oh, how many zeros do we have? That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So 10, 10 to the power of 4. All right, because there is 10,000 nails that have an area of 1 square millimeter, not just 1. So these two cancel out. I'm going to get 10 to the power of negative 2. You're going to have... You're going to have you know, to use your algebra scales here because you have to do some simplification here. Uh, make sure you watch my video on the some of the SAT math questions. I have some videos of exponent rules in my channel as well. So you learn how to cancel them out because you can't use a calculator on the IMAT physics test. So the pressure is going to be 75 times 10 to the power of 10 divided by 10 to the power of minus 2. What do we do now? Well, again, we just have to bring this tower to the top. And how do we do that is we Whenever two exponents are getting divided, you have to subtract their powers. So 75 gets multiplied by 10 to the power of 1 minus minus 2. So we're going to get 75 times 10 to the power of positive 3. But such an answer does not exist in any of the choices. What do we do? We just have to convert this seven into 7.5. So we give this 10 a power, and then we shift the decimal places. The decimal place is here. We just shifted one place back. We get 7.5 times 10 to the power of 4. The answer is actually B in this question. All right. Uh, keep in mind, why I got 7.5 times 10 to the power of 4 is because, look, I got 75 times 10 to the power of 3, right? The decimal place is here right now. If I shifted one place back, I can add 1 to the power of this tree. So I can write this as 7.5 times 10 to the power of 4. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at 21. It says... A solid wooden cube has sides of length uh, A. So I know the volume of a cube is just one side to the power of three. That's going to be the volume of the cube. The density of the wood is uh, rho. The cube is completely immersed in a beaker of oil, which has a density of uh, sigma. The top of the surface is uh, horizontal. The gravitational field is G. So G, and we know that that's sigma. So what is the upward force? Okay, according to Archimedes' principle, the upward force, the buoyant force, is just going to be uh, sigma times G times A cube here, which makes choice D the correct answer here. A lot of people might choose B, but B, that row, is actually showing the density of the wood. You want the density of the liquid, not the wood. So that's why B is wrong. Uh, question 22, it says a stone of density 5.2 grams per centimeter cube and a volume of 200 centimeter cube is completely submerged in a liquid of 1.2 grams per centimeter cube. What is the magnitude of the upthrust acting on a stone? Okay, so the liquid, right, has a density of 1.2 grams per centimeter cube. Give this a denominator of one. That means for every one centimeter cube, for every one centimeter cube, um, you have 1.2 grams of that liquid. Now, uh, they're saying... What's going to happen if we kind of, um, you know, maybe double the amount or maybe even 200 times the amount? Like, let's say we have 200 centimeter cubes of that amount, right? According to the question, you want to put 200 centimeter cubes of that uh, something inside of that liquid. So the lick, I mean, the volume is getting multiplied by 200. So obviously the amount of mass is also going to get multiplied by 200. 1.2 times 200 is about 240 grams, right? Now that we know that, that means that basically uh, for uh, every 240 grams, we're going to experience a certain amount of weight, right? How can we find the weight of it? Well, we just have to divide this by 1,000 and multiply that by 10 because we know that weight is mass times gravity. So the answer for the weight of this question is going to be 0 0.24. I'm sorry, actually 2.4 newtons which means choice E is the correct answer. So this part about the, the stone's density is not really useful because we just use the volume of it and we see how much of uh, uh, uptrust is experienced by the stone uh, when the amount of mass that is put inside the liquid is multiplied by 200, which happens to be 2.4 newtons. All right, now, um, let me just tell you one thing. Before you go ahead and watch the other videos on the IMAT physics topic questions, make sure you read the topics first from the A-level books and then come back and watch these videos. Because if you watch them without having any prior knowledge, you might find them quite, uh, quite challenging and difficult. And make sure you subscribe and share the video with your friends if you find them helpful. This was the last video on the IMAT topic questions. In the future, hopefully, we're going to have some videos on uh, full explanations of the IMAT physics sections as well as the math.